Hey everybody. The beginning and the end. Two sides of the same die, perpetually locked in the endless amalgamination that is the game of life. life. From the deep, life. seething heart of this matter, we can only elucidate that we have been put here, not to ask why we have been put here, but instead to ponderize and strip down to the underwear the notions, notions behind the notions. give and take of our meaningful, futile existences. <coughs> Sorry, there was there was really no other way I could intro this. Today I'm gonna to be talking about Xavier, Renegade Angel. All right, now I'm not even gonna try talking about the show itself without some background. So Xavier Renegade Angel was an animated surreal comedy series created by Vernon Chapman and John Lee for Adult Swim from 2007 to 2009. The show centers around Xavier, a self-styled spiritual seeker who travels the world in pursuit of his various endeavors while simultaneously ruining as many things as possible. The primary avenues for the show's humor were surreal absurdism and dark comedy, a semi-common mix in modern adult animated television. Although the show flew mostly under the radar during airing, it gained a large following several years down the road. This is one of those shows that everyone collectively forgot about and then collectively remembered like a decade later, and it's not hard to see why. A number of clips from the show have been circulating the internet recently, most notably this scene, Xavier's debate with himself from the episode Shakashuri Blowdown, which I regret to say I've memorized word for word. And that's about all the background I can provide. So let's, let's talk about the show. Now, this video is going to be a lot like an episode of Xavier, in that it'll probably be fast, chaotic, and difficult to understand, but I'll do my best. <clears throat> the best way I can describe XRA is dense. Everything about the show is packed tightly and precisely together, a fairly remarkable feat of writing and planning in and of itself. Although the episodes are only around 11 minutes long, they feel so much longer. It doesn't help that the show does not follow the commonly accepted standard of having one or two themes per episode. Rather, an episode of XRA can feature five to ten distinct themes, stitched together so fluidly you often can't tell where they start or end. Somewhat like our main character. You like that segue, huh? Xavier is the essence, the embodiment of the show. Although he seems like a spiritual and psychological savant on the surface, Xavier's three defining characteristics are his astounding ignorance, his stunning self-absorption, and the fact that he is incredibly, unbelievably stupid. It's these traits that allow Xavier to cause insane amounts of damage while believing he's doing at least some sort of good. Xavier's motives change constantly, and he often perceives a non-existent danger or threat, and, in trying to resolve it, ends up causing it to happen for real. He also insults people while trying to sympathize with them. Like, a lot. Oh, hey, you ruffians, leave that poor Gimp alone. Who you calling Gimp, weirdo? He probably can't tell you're mocking him. Xavier is unique in that he exists solely to cause extreme chaos and destruction. I legitimately think he doesn't do a single helpful thing in the entire show. I guess he's chaotic neutral, but he's so far in the chaotic direction that he might as well just be evil. But it's thanks to Xavier that we have XRA's incredibly singular structure. You see, the traditional structure of most stories as a whole is that the protagonist begins in a somewhat neutral position, after which things generally get worse during the course of the conflict, which is then resolved as the protagonist soars to a higher level after accomplishing some goal or learning a lesson. Occasionally, for ironic, humorous, or dramatic effect, media will have characters end up exactly where they started. However, XRA is the first show I've watched in a long while where the ending is certifiably worse than the beginning. In an episode of XRA, things start neutral, then get worse, then get worser, and then the episode just ends. There is never a conclusion. Ever. The typical episode goes like this. Xavier wanders in the desert saying stupid things until he encounters a town or people or an event. He then perceives some non-existent danger or a very mild inconvenience that he blows out of proportion. Xavier tries to, quote, help people or, quote, fix the problem with some bizarre solution, usually involving a flashback. Through doing this, he ends up making everything so much worse. Sometimes he tries to fix it again and causes even more damage. And at the end of it all, he either moves on like nothing happened or we get a weird, trippy ending. Don't even get me started on the endings. You may hear this and think, oh, alright, that's how the episodes play out, but what about the comedy? Well, 
I'm glad I asked. A large portion of the show features either gross-out humor or dark humor, which is probably the greatest turnoff for people looking into it. Granted, I don't watch many shows in this vein, probably because I don't have TV, but never have I watched a show with so many moments that made me think, did they really just say that? The show is weird, it's uncomfortable, it can be downright disturbing. But unlike a lot of other shows, with XRA, that's the intent. It's supposed to make you feel violated, and it succeeds marvelously. The show does an excellent job of keeping you on your toes, which is aided by a large catalog of bizarre choices, like Xavier's straight-up uncanny speech patterns. I hate to brag my britches, but I'm a rather large medium when I penetrate the gray veil. Or the fact that sometimes people will have voice lines that aren't their own. This parcel, take that, take that, taste the pain, 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 take take that, taste the pain, take that, taste the pain, take that, taste the pain. Or the show's strange obsession with variations on the phrase, we don't cotton to freaks. Hey, freak. We don't cotton to weirdos in our town. We don't cotton to freaks here in Burberry. Listen, we don't cotton to freaks around these parts. Scram, weirdo. XRA is also littered with causality and continuity breaks, which happens so often that you just learn to live with it and just don't question it when someone who was in a flashback a second ago is now in the real world. Probably one of the only legitimate through lines in the entire show is XRA's propensity for making fun of everyone and everything. Of course, this isn't new by any standards, but the way the show does it is really a breath of fresh air. Of course, this has all been pointed out by a number of others before me, but essentially, what makes XRA's brand of ridicule unique is that the show itself doesn't really have an agenda. It's all too common for shows to inadvertently tip their own hand while poking fun at various ideas. They often reveal their biases in the things they will and won't ridicule. As has been said, they tell you what's right and wrong, rather than letting you figure it out on your own. XRA labors under no such motives. The show makes fun of anything it can get its hands on, nothing is off limits, and nothing is really put on a pedestal as better than anything else. In a way, it's very honest. It doesn't seek to persuade you one way or the other, simply to highlight the weaknesses and drawbacks of various ideas and systems. Strangely enough, it seems like the show is genuinely improved through the fact that Xavier is completely and utterly unrelatable to the viewer. His appearance is strange and sort of unnerving. His word choice and sentence structure skirts the edge of indecipherable. His voice sounds like a surfer dude who's constantly out of breath and has never spoken English before, trying to cut a Duke Nukem impression and failing miserably. This is no way to cure people. I've tried curing the dead that way, and it only leads to heartbreak. Even his motives, actions, and decisions are so alien and contrary to how a normal person would think that you can be almost certain no one in their right mind is going to relate to him. But in my opinion, this is a good thing. It makes it feel like we're watching the show as a true outside observer, which I think is the way it's meant to be viewed, and it legitimately enhances the experience. And what an experience it is. This is not a show you can have playing in the background. It demands your constant and unwavering attention, because the themes and ideas change so rapidly that I suffered numerous instances of mental whiplash from the plot changing and powering on before I even realized what was happening. Every episode feels like 10 episodes, and even though I just finished binging the show, if you asked me to remember what episode a specific event is from, I would be hard pressed to tell you. An episode might start with Xavier pretending to channel the spirit of the recently deceased inventor of lotion, and seven minutes later the plot will have shifted to an entire town of people covered in gold pretending to be robots having all-out war with a group of Muslim tourists. I'm not making this up, by the way. This, this is a real episode. And now, some people may choose not to watch the show simply because it seems crude or stupid, but this is simply not the case. You see, while it might look like that on the surface, on closer inspection you can really see the work and thought put into each episode, even through their admittedly off-putting and crude outward appearances. If the intent of the show had been to tell coherent, meaningful stories presented through an aesthetically pleasing lens, it would be a massive failure. But that's not what XRA is about. The show knows it's ugly, it knows that it can be incredibly stupid, but it's supposed to be that way. 
It's been designed and engineered with high precision, and while not every episode is excellent, the show manages to come together as a cohesive and legitimately entertaining whole, despite its flaws. The jokes are well written and come towards the viewer at rapid fire. The dialogue is exceedingly complex and is a masterwork of using a thousand words to say nothing at all. And it also helps that the show happens to have one of the greatest final scenes in all of television. Interesting. I think you're ready to see yourself for the first time. Not how you imagine yourself, but how you truly are. Hot dang. I'm cured. Cured? Who said there was anything wrong with you? Now, although the show's obviously not perfect, and it suffers from a menagerie of flaws, Xavier, Renegade Angel, manages to shine far brighter with these blemishes than many other shows do without them. If you can see past the ugly exterior, the chaotic plot lines, and the offensive and off-putting themes, you will find a show that is truly and utterly one of a kind. Thanks for watching. It's a long, hard, dusty road you'll journey on through a world you've 